Hello guys, my name is Kilo Whiskey, and this is going to be a new updated beginner's guide to stay out. I've created a new character for this, and we're going to go uh, start to, well, it's going to be a three-part series. So, part one is going to be this uh, beginning part of the tutorial, right after you've created a new character. I'll take you all the way through uh, until we get to the city of Lubitsch, and then we're going to continue through there until we get to Gourmet's Village and this is going to be a three-part series I'm going to try and make this one shorter than the original one and I'm going to go into a little bit more detail than I did on the previous ones uh, the previous videos I kind of went through was meant to be more of a guide for some friends so this one here is I'm going to refine things just a little bit and this is more for new players or if you're interested in playing the game you can check this out but let's get into it so we've just created a brand new character and currently where I'm at is the very beginning of the game and if I hit M you'll see that uh, I'm over here in Bravo 2 grid 3 and this map takes us down through these swamps until we get to the warehouse and we can just barely see the next map here and this beginning section you can go through it and if you're a brand new player to the game I would recommend doing this entire thing but for a sake of time I'm gonna skip this very first part of the tutorial you're gonna follow along uh, this stalker guide he's gonna guide you through these uh, these hills here where he's gonna teach you how to use your friends list how to climb over obstacles and crouch and different things like that so I'm going to skip this first part here, and we're going to jump into the second part, which people have uh, a little bit more issue with. So we have this little window that we can interact with that pops up. It says skip the tutorial. I'm going to go ahead and do that. It's going to ask me if I'm sure. All right. So now that we have uh, entered the second part of the map, sometimes there'll be other players here. And first thing we're going to want to do, as soon as we get through here, you can see we've come through all of this into this new part of the map, is we have some different controls. Uh, if you look at my screen, you'll see things are kind of moved around a little bit differently. You can actually click on this map. You can move it around. And you can interact with a lot of different things down here. So if I click on PvP, it brings up those different characteristics. Uh, emotes is a little smiley face. I can bring up emotes or I can hit the zero on my numpad. Uh, we're, but we're going to go ahead and open up our inventory here, hitting I, and then we're going to hit U to bring up our character menu. And then we're going to first equip our Nagant revolver. We're going to equip our jackknife that they give us. Go ahead and throw our car med kit down here. Bandages, anti rad. Um, hit R to reload our pistol. Oh, cancel that. Almost used a bandage. If you hit escape quick enough, you can cancel out any action that you're performing. Throw so our water down here and the quick slot. And so at our character menu here, this is uh, head clothing, you know, different body clothing, our gadget slots, weapon slots. Uh, weapon slot number one, weapon slot number two, number three, and then number four is your hot bar down here. So by using your number bar, you can cycle through these different things. There's also different tabs. So you can set these up for, you know, farming, for uh, PvP. You can s scroll through those. But let's go ahead and craft campfire. So we're going to open up our crafting menu, which is P. And we can see we have create a bonfire. So let's do that. The reason we're doing this is because if I hit J, and I come over here to note from guide, uh, he's going to tell us um, about this area. And we have different quests that we can do. 
And we can track this, which, you know, is telling us to read the note. And the note is right here. So I can click read. So you see I just completed uh, these quests. Weapon from warehouse. Old man in the village. So that's Vlad. And he's got some tips. You can see that little red icon that pops up next to... Means it's a new quest. Familiarity is uh, people that we've met. So any stalkers or NPCs we meet along the way. It's going to pop up in here. Clans is going to be different factions that we meet. Events is for different events. Like uh, They'll pop up different events you come across. Like the TV event, Bulldozer. And then Diary... You'll find magazine articles and other clippings and books and things like that along your journeys that'll pop up over here. But let's go ahead and click apply to make our bonfire. Oh, we already did it. Let me cancel that. You can hit escape real quick to cancel that action. So walking forward. Uh, yeah, so there's like invisible triggers. So by walking forward, I hit that... Uh, next job where it says fry some meat so that's a new quest he's going to tell us to you know make a campfire and craft some meat let's go over here and click kindle fire it's going to give us this uh this campfire walk over here till it turns green all right make our campfire now open up your campfire by using f we do not have a cooking pot yet, but we can just drag and drop some meat into this campfire. And now all of our meat is cooking, and you can see the progression bar here. Cook food will automatically plop down in here. This campfire is private, nobody else can access it unless I click allow access to uh, all. And then other people can then uh, put in and take things out of the fire. Tier 2 cooking is done with uh, different pots and there is quests you can do later in the game that teach you some of the ingredients but you can go on the wiki and find a full list of ingredients to make different meals the meals have different abilities like increase sprint speed uh, decrease weight carry increasing your stamina so those meals are a good thing to have and to know how to make Anything with a little fire starter here is telling you that it's flammable and it can be used to stoke up the fire so I could throw my bandages in there and use it as fuel. I have an extra piece of wood. One piece of wood is going to give us almost uh, a full bar of fuel. So there's no need to throw that, throwing this log on the fire until it's down here pretty low. But uh, I don't need to do that. I'm just going to wait for this meat to finish cooking. And then we're going to take our cooked meat and let the campfire go away. If your campfire goes out and it's not burning, after a few seconds it'll despawn. So again, J is our quest tab. Uh, let's see. Talk to the station people and the old man in the village. I come down here and click tracking. It's going to put a little note in the corner. And that will update as I go along the way. Station people, I can track this quest as well. Some things you want to know. Uh, so down here, this is a no PvP zone. We don't have to worry about anybody shooting us. Right now I'm getting uh, effects from the campfire. It's going to help keep me warm. It's going to get rid of uh, several different types of debuffs. This is our inventory and I have mine set up for a 10 by 10 the higher resolution monitor you have the bigger you can set your inventory without it blocking if you got a low resolution monitor putting your inventory on 10 by 10 is probably going to take up half your screen so you kind of have to match your inventory to the resolution of your monitor uh, the trash can is a delete button so I can take different items if I do not want it at all I can drop it in the trash can and permanently delete it to get rid of it. Let's check out our meat. Our meat is finished cooking and has dropped down here into this spot. We got the green text is quest complete. I can hit enter to bring up the 
chat. So general is general chat and it's localized. So if I say something in this chat, only people in this area are gonna hear me. Uh, you have groups, PVP, whispers, you can trade or change all of this. There's a bunch of different settings in here. We can change this all around. We can uh, change the transparency of the background of this text. I can even click on the, uh, the text and resize it and move this around the window wherever we want it. So let's get going now that we've got that done. Oh, we can hit K. So I got two points. I'm now a level two, about to bump up to a level three. And the first thing I'm going to do is increase maximum sprint speed. I have five points and then I have one more point so I can increase maximum weight carry or perk cost two so I need two perk points to increase that I'll wait you have uh, this is your character menu the maximum level you can achieve is 150 and each one of these brackets is about 50 points so you can only ever fully unlock three of them if you wish or just a mix of all uh, you can create three characters so you can build different characters uh, for different setups down here is your medical up here is combat this is uh, stamina and there's some looting in this there's some defensive stuff over here this is mostly hunting and gathering but let's get on the road and we're going to be heading to Vladimir. He's over here. And after reading that note, it's going to tell me that this is where we need to go. So we can run in the straight line. Achievements. Okay. We can use Alt Look to spin around. Now, there's different servers for this first map. Uh, so if you plan on joining with a group of friends and trying to do all of this together, you might get broken up into different servers for this initial area that we're in. And that's to keep the population low. So if we were to have 20 or 30 people running around, it would be a lot harder for you to uh, do some of the quests in this initial area. So they have like, you know, different maps starting out. We can use uh, the shift key to sprint, or you can scroll your mouse wheel. If I scroll my mouse wheel back, he'll start to walk. If I scroll my mouse wheel forward, he'll start sprinting. This is a uh, well with clean, drinkable water. So I'll come up to it. I can hit interact with it F. And then if I have a container to put water in, I can fill up my containers off of that. But water bottles are not a container that you can fill up. So we're going to run through Vlad's dialogue. For the sake of time, I'm just uh, speeding through. And he will trade. So like I can give him a piece of wood. He's going to give me two credit points. Personal credits you need to buy certain items. So like these items, we can see it's 6,000 rubles, 26,000, 4,000 rubles, but it requires 60 personal credits. Right now I have 14 uh, credits with him. If I sell him this piece of wood, I have 16 credits. So you need credits with the vendor and money. And you can get these credits various different ways. You can work for the NPC, you can trade goods to the NPCs to get these credits. He just gave me a key. This here. Red items are quest items. So the note that we had to read and the anti-reds that I got from the beginning that the stalker guide gives to us, but we skipped through that part in this hatch key. The hatch key is going to allow us to get a TOZ shotgun. And we have to run back here to the water tower. The water tower it should be right about here. One of the maps is so C4, grid 4. There we are. Gonna come up to this water tower. 
Gonna use our hatch key, hit F, use Vladimir's key. Level up again. And now we're down here in these tunnels. This tunnel is not a safe zone for whatever reason, but uh, I doubt you'll run into people trying to PVP you down here. We're gonna run through these tunnels. It tells you you can hit L and you can use a match to light up your way. It's not terribly dark down here, depending on your monitor settings. But, see, that is a dead end. We're gonna continue on. We're gonna need to go up that ladder later. But, coming over here to the campfire that we saw, there's a TOZ. Let's pick this gun up. And now we have a TOZ shotgun in our inventory, so we can come over here and we can click equip. And Equip is going to throw it into our number one slot. All right. Big cockroaches. Come back out here. Run over to this ladder. And we're going to go up to the abandoned warehouse. We're going to press F. And start climbing. Okay. We're now here at the abandoned warehouse. So let's go get ammo for our shotgun and see if we can find any stashes. This first building, there might be some stashes laying around. And if I find any, you'll get to see what they look like. They come in uh, lots of different shapes and sizes as I'm getting chased by some rats. There's usually no stashes over there. Yes, this green box. We're going to hit F to interact with it. Just leveled up again. Looking for some stashes. No stashes. In that green box, we got some shells for our shotgun. So I can go ahead and hit R. And load two slugs into the shotgun. over here and let's look for some stashes still nothing if I step on those rats they will shoot me uh, I think I stepped on one a moment ago let me see well we got cleaned out by the all that text but yeah so oh, now you're gonna run from me huh there we go. As you can see, you have been shot by small rat. I'm not going to waste any ammunition on them. They, they do almost no damage. It is rare, but they can poison you sometimes. Still no stashes. I'm guessing because there was another player, that player swiped all the stashes. That's the downside to having a lot of people around, is the more players, the less likelihood that uh, you're going to end up finding something. They automatically spawn, you know, there's a cooldown on them, so. I'm not going to hang out here too long. It's usually nothing spectacular that you find in these stashes, but uh, it'll look like a pile of Depending on what it is, if it's ammunition, then it'll be... Oh, here's a stash. So you see this trash bag, and I look at it. It says garbage pack, which is a little gear symbol, and has a glow around it. Let's see what we get. Uh, some grease and some ammo. There's nothing amazing in any of these stashes, so... I wouldn't waste any time waiting for them to spawn. All right, since we leveled up, let's go ahead and hit K. So we're now five points. Let's do stamina here. Stamina is very important because most of this game, if not all this game, you're spent running. There's no vehicles. And it's not like a whole lot of fast travel or guides. So. A little bit of medical. 
get back out of here. Okay, we are not out now out of the tunnel. So from here, what we can do is if we open up the map, there are th three different ways that we can get out of the second part of this tutorial and get into the full game and get to the first city of Lubitsch. Uh, the first way is working for Mr. Vladimir here, and he's going to have you collect a bunch of flowers that are kind of scattered around the map. And once you get a certain number of flowers for him, you can then leave the game. The second way is working for the station hucksters over here. And they're going to have you get a tonic. It's basically an alcoholic drink for Mr. Watchman. And that's going to allow you to use a handcart to get out of this tutorial and get into the game. Or over here on this road, there is a man in Foxtrot 5 here, Grid 3. You can kind of see his truck there on the road. You have to do a quest for him where you have to get some grease, some oil, and a car battery. And you can use his method for getting out of the game. Uh, I usually do the tonic for the huckster. I find it's faster because the car parts, um, you have to work for the NPCs. You can buy the battery off of the station huckster. And I think uh, Vladimir sells something else. And then you gotta find some grease in a stash. For Vladimir, you can get lucky and you can find the flowers for him fairly quickly, but it's kind of luck of the draw. And if there's a lot of other players running around, you might not find the flowers you need as quickly to get out with Vladimir. So I prefer the tonic for Watchman method to get out of this area quicker because it's kind of guaranteed versus luck of the draw of finding flowers and, and certain spawns. So we're going to get over to the station and talk to the station huckster. And on the way over there, I'm going to swoop by this trash pile and look for stashes. Anything you find in this game, you want to pick up and you want to keep. It's basically uh, hoard as much as you can because every little thing that you come across, you will eventually need later in the game. Um... So let's go ahead and set a waypoint. Uh, no, I don't want to add a mark. I want to place target. And there's a garbage dump here that's fenced in. We'll have to go around. We might run into a couple wild dogs. So we'll just keep our head about us. As you'll notice, so this entire way, I have not spent any money and I have not fired a single shot from any of my guns. Here we go. Here's some uh, daisies. I want to definitely pick those up. Any flowers that you come across, you want to pick up. That goes for anything. Anything you come across that you can just freely pick up, always grab. Because either you can use that item for crafting or a quest purpose later in the game. And if you don't do that, you can always just sell those items in bulk on the board. All right, let's talk to Mr. Watchman. First time here, he's going to ask me to get some copper wire for him. I hear radio playing. Just for future reference, if uh, the radio annoys you, you can interact with the radios using F. Turn the music off. But uh, it only turns it off for you, and it will be on next time you come back. Station Huckster, hi, how you doing? He also sells things, so we can go Let's Trade, and we can buy pistol, ammunition, more slugs off of him, and some food. But I'm not going to buy anything off of him because the game gives me everything I need right out of the gate. Uh, I can sell the grease to him, but I'm not going to because there's a quest later on that we can use it. So I got 18 rounds for my shotgun, 11 rounds, plus what's in the gun, of course, so 7 and 2. And then let me put my fried meat down here for me to eat. And I got some daisies. Now, did he give me an MGD? So I got some new quests. Destination, it's going to... 
quest for the hucksters, allies. Uh, occasionally you will run across some broken translations where it's, you know, you have English and then Russian. But, uh, let's see. Any didn't level up yet. Over here is another form of water well. So this is a clean water source that if I had a soldier's flask or an airborne flask, I could fill water and get that. Well, let's get the copper wire for watchmen. That transformer right there on the hill is where we're going to get the copper wire from. Okay, once you get to the transformer, there's going to be three garbage piles that you may find it in. Old electronics. I found it on my first try. If it's not in that old electronics, it's going to be over here. There's going to be like an old TV set sitting right here. and Or it'll be sitting over here in this old radio. And now that we have it, let's go back to Watchmen. Okay, so we're now back at Watchmen. So we're going to open up our inventory, and then we have a coil of copper wire. You're going to right-click on this coil and click Disassemble. It's going to ask you if you're sure. Click Yes. And he's going to break this, uh, this piece down with the copper wire, and it's going to transform into the coil of copper wire that you need for the quest. And it's also an achievement that you get for disassembling different items. So... Go ahead and then talk to Watchmen. I brought you the wire that you asked for. Here you go. All right. Now let's go over here. I'm going to talk to the Huckster real quick. Let's see, maybe could we trade? Okay, bye. Uh, Jay, let's do Courier. Okay, so I gotta get a, a tonic for the Huckster. Okay, we're on. All right, good. So we're gonna go back to Vladimir and ask him about getting the tonic for the Watchmen. So let's head over there now. Okay, so we're back here at Mr. Vladimir. Let's see, here's the thing. Uh, let's trade. Okay, here's the thing. Uh, I was at the station and the huckster sent me to you. I need the tonic. No problem. Okay, I can get the dog, sprouts, yada yada. Alright, quest update. Go over here to you, Jay. And our quest is updated. So, I like to get these things in order. Uh, sometimes it seems like it doesn't work if we do it out of order. So, first thing that we need to do is get four dog ears or kill two dogs and to do that we're gonna go over to the swampy area in echo five okay so here we are in delta five grid two and there's a swamp house there's a guy inside of it more importantly there's dogs and the plants that we need to collect in this area so let's go ahead and start walking through this swampy area looking for dogs and while we're at it we're gonna run in this building and talk to an NPC in here we should get a little bit of our XP for that it's gonna like basically force us to talk to this guy all right Should be some dogs anywhere around here. Now, these uh, flowers like to spawn in this general area. Usually, I walk over here and I find all three before I can. Here we go. First dog coming in. Now, I can use the on-screen crosshairs that are only worth a shit uh, in very close. Like, from here to that tree, I would use the on-screen crosshair. And then, if they're further away than that, then we're going to switch to our iron sights. I'm up to the corpse. We're going to hit F. And as we're breaking him down, he's slowly going to start to open up, and we'll see, like, more blood in his ribs. That's going to tell you that the carcass has been already butchered
All right, two of our dog ears collected. Now, if we come across any of the plants we're looking for, they're going to be pretty obvious. They'll have a glowing white uh, halo kind of around them. Kind of like wood and all the other flowers that you come across. There's one right there. Up, oh, yep, that's it. And we got a dog. I missed. But yeah, so they're pretty easy to spot. So there's our first piece of root. Got our four ears. Number one. See if we can find two more. So a big old mutant rat right there. not waste them. Go ahead and grab these dogs while I'm here. It's not really worth that much money, but butchering the animal and selling the meat will pay for the ammo that it costs to kill them. So you'll recruit some of your money that way. Okay, this might take a minute to find the rest of the flowers, so I'm going to go ahead and skip, skip ahead until I found all of them. Okay, so I have collected the necessary amount of plants and the dog ears, and I'm standing here in Delta 5, Grid 4, right here in the very bottom corner. So this is like keypad 3 at this large, funky-looking tree. And this is where we need to get the a, a specific piece of calamine root. But uh, as you can see, I'm standing right where it spawns. It literally spawns right here where I'm standing. And it's not here yet, and that confuses some people because they're like, well, I got these three that randomly spawn throughout the swamp, and I have the dog ears, so why is this piece not here? Because we have to put the first three that we collected in a pot over at that building there before this piece will spawn. So let's do that now. Okay, so we're back here at the swamp house. And over here, you'll see a little dog house, and right behind it looks like a milk jug. It's labeled can. So we'll put the roop into the can, and quest complete. So now it's time to head back over to that large funky tree that I was just at, and we'll collect the last piece of root for this quest. Okay, now we're back at the tree, and you can see that now that I've put the root in the pot, that plant has magically spawned. And let's just go ahead and pick her up. We now have all the pieces we need. Once we get the piece, we're in, if you're in front of the tree, we're going to look, uh, what is that? To the west here. And if we go straight west from the tree, there's a hole in the fence right over here that we can find and get out of. So let's go that way. And that pole in the fence, I think they put there specifically for this. Yeah, here it is. Okay, so we're now back here at Vlad. Let's go ahead and give him... Here's the thing uh, about the tonic for the hucksters. I brought the dog ears. I brought the root. Okay, see you. Now, if we hit J... Let's see, show the tonic to the hucksters, so we gotta go back to the station. Alright. And cool little thing you can do if you come over here to your jacket and you right click on it, you can do put on hood. I actually have a little piece of uh, headgear.
All right. Uh, what do we got? Here is our tonic. So let's jump over to the station. Okay, so now that we have the tonic, we're back here at the station huckster. So let's go to... I brought the tonic. Yes, I got the copper wire. Uh, yes, I will get the artifacts for you. What he's going to want us to do... Alright, so if we bring up you, we can see our gadget slot. So let's hit I, the MGD prototype that... Uh, the Huckster gave us. We're going to go ahead and equip this guy. Now it's over here. Let's right click on it. Let's charge it. It's going to use these 9 volt batteries. Gadget's fully charged. And let's go ahead and head down these train tracks and get to the anomaly. While we're there, enter. Let me set my auto run, but let's go ahead and hit U. Let's grab this MGD and throw it down here in our hot bar. And jump to the anomaly. Alright, so here's what we're going to do. This is how we're going to use our MGD. If we hit open up, we can see the MGD prototype is in our inventory. It is fully charged. I have it over here in the gadget slot, so I can either right click on it to turn it on, or I can just press the number 9 button to turn it on, and that's what we're going to do. So, right in front of us, we can see some leaves moving around. We can kind of hear some faint rumbling, but you're not always going to hear this. So, we're going to come up to it, and we're going to throw a rock. And that'll have the anomaly reveal itself to us. Right there, we can see there's an artifact inside of it. If we get too close to it, those rocks are going to hit us and cause bleeding. So, what we're going to do is press 9 to open up our MGD. And we can move this MGD about the screen. And we can see two boxes. So we have our outer field and then this inner field. So you have, uh, as I scooch forward, the M the uh, artifact, even though the anomaly is invisible right now, it will show up on the radar. So now we can see uh, that it's shown up. And we have to get this dot, which is the artifact, inside of this inner box. And you want to get it in there just only just. Because the closer you get to this anomaly, the more damage and radiation it's going to do to you. So let's slowly inch forward. And we're just slowly moving forward. And we can see that dot moving across that screen. And once I get it to where it is inside, it says press start button to begin. So we can either click, double click on uh, this or hit the start button and we can see this pointer is going to start moving and we have to start typing in numbers. I hate how slow it moves. It only moves as slow in the tutorial for the prototype. Alright, we're going to back out. Now that we're away from it, we can hit tab to hide our cursor. And then I can move around with the MGD still on the screen. Alt look with it. It uses up a lot of battery. Batteries are not light and they're not cheap. Uh, so you don't want to constantly leave this thing up and open. I will do it occasionally if I'm in a heavy uh, anomaly field because what it will do is I'll be able to uh, see if there's artifacts around me without throwing rocks. But let's just go ahead and shut that thing down. We're going to head back to the Station Huckster. Okay, so we are back at the Station Huckster. Let's go ahead and give him... I brought the artifact that you have asked for. Okay, what's next? Should I give the tonic to Watchman? Okay, see you. So now we can go ahead and give this tonic to the Watchman. Brought you your medicine. Here it is. All right. Let's go back and talk to the huckster. And make sure we give him back the MGD. So now he has. Check our inventory. Hit you. He has been given back his MGD, and uh, now we can continue. Now we have a package for Franklin. 
And I've basically completed the tutorial now. So we can run kind of westward down the tracks till we get to Delta 8, Grid 4, this tunnel. And that's how we're going to get out of this first tutorial and on to the first city. And leave the rest of these guys behind. See, those two gentlemen over there don't even have a shotgun yet, so... Uh, good luck to you. But, getting out of here. Okay, so here we are, end of the road, ready to get out of this first tutorial, or second tutorial map, into the first city of Lubitsch. And let's see what we got along the way. So we have our TOZ and the Gaunt Revolver. Still have an old jackknife. I didn't bother getting a table knife. But I got about 10,000 rubles. I haven't spent any money at all. And I still have 13 shots and 25 from my pistol. Along with different items I have found along the way. Uh, and let's check my level. I got four more points I can use here. So let's go ahead and increase our maximum weight carry. Uh, let's go ahead and do speed of loading weapon perks. Increase health by 10. Kind of want that. You can get medicines up quicker here. All right. Give me a lift. Yes, I got his permission. And leveled up again. Okay, so we are now in the city of Lubeck. And this is the first real map of the game. Uh, where you can play with any friends that are currently already in. And we're going to pick up the rest of this in video part two. So that's it for part one. Thanks for watching, guys. Check out part two if you want to continue along in this journey. And there will be the part three that everybody has asked for to this particular line. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.